Hello everyone, and welcome to Going Further with Flat Buffers. So, um, so this talk is about advanced uses of flat buffers. So I won't go into details about what flat buffers actually is. But if you've never heard of it, let me give you the executive summary. Flat buffers is a cross-platform serialization library that is all about memory efficiency. If you're going to remember just one thing about it, let it be that it allows in-place access of serialized data without first parsing or unpacking it. And it does all this while still allowing the data to evolve. It is strongly typed through schemas, and of course we support lots of languages and import export to JSON. It is used in engines, uh, in game engines uh, internally at Google and externally, for example, in uh, Cocos 2 dx It is also widely used outside of games, for example, at Facebook and Netflix. So today I'll be talking about seven advanced ways in which you can get more out of flat buffers. First up, we have schemaless flat buffers, otherwise known as flex buffers. So flat buffers generally are a great way to store strongly typed data. But what if you need to store data for which you can't define a schema yet? So with flat buffers, we took all the advantages of flat buffers and we turned them into self-describing data structure. It still has the in-place access without parsing, so it has similar speed advantages to flat buffers. Uh, you can share keys and values to get big space savings compared to JSON. Uh, the serializer automatically finds the smallest possible representations for all your values, uh, often down to a single byte. And you can nest them inside flat buffers, so you can choose the most appropriate data representation for all your data. And on this slide, we have an example of creating a flex buffer on the fly uh, without a schema and without having to create any data structures first. Now, don't worry if the code looks a little bit scary. There's also a version that doesn't use lambdas. Um, then you can read it and um, directly from the buffer with random access and no memory allocation whatsoever. Flat buffers also has in-place binary search. The way this works, if you have a vector of tables, you can mark one of the fields as a key and have the vector sorted during serialization. This allows you to do fast binary search lookups directly on the buffer without having to create any map or dictionary structures. Next, in-place mutation. So serialized data is not typically something you want to modify after the fact, but flat buffers allows you to do so anyway. Um, this kind of makes sense since a flat buffer is something that can replace the traditional object tree um, so with this feature, you can use the store values too. And then once you're done with it, you can write it back to disk without having to do any reserialization of the data. Next, uh, reflection allows you to work with serialized data in ways that go beyond the simple read-write API. For one, it allows you to run a, a load a schema at runtime and then inspect it programmatically. It also allows in-place mutation of more complex data structures like strings and tables. Um, as you can see from it, as you can maybe see from the sample code, uh, binary schema is implemented using flat buffers itself, using the same gener generate code API um, as the, to access the schema, which is all very meta. Um, we also have a traditional object API. And there are times when a classical object tree is the best representation for your data, and none of the previous methods are sufficient. In that case, flat buffers can generate code for you that turns these buffers into idiomatic C++. It's not as fast as using buffers in place, but if you happen to need it, then uh, it's better than writing it all by hand. And now for something completely different. gRPC is Google's open source RPC library. And now, flat buffers works out of the box with gRPC. So you can specify your RPC in the schema and have all the glue code generated for it. And last, and maybe least, uh, to make migration from protocol buffers to flat buffers a little bit easier, we now have an automatic way to translate protocol buffer schemas into flat buffers. And that's all I have for you today. Uh, for more information on flat buffers, please check out this URL or just come chat to me afterwards. Thank you very much.